Hello. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through a challenge that is in the ninja style, uh, similar to the American Ninja Warrior or similar game shows where contestants try to progress through an obstacle course that gets progressively tougher. So in this challenge, it's going to be an Excel obstacle course where each time you get an answer correct, you can move on to the next through a series of 15 questions. Now, the purpose of this challenge is to really teach some basic Excel skills and teach you to be efficient in working with some functions. So we're gonna go through each piece step by step. My intention is that you can watch this video, learn from it yourself, and once you learn it, you can actually go and coach other students on how to do these same skills. I think this is a perfect case to use in a club meeting. Uh, whether you have an Excel club or not, most clubs find a need for Excel skills with their members. Uh, and so this is a great way to kind of spread the MECC to other groups and clubs and get more students involved. All right, so let's jump in. All right, so you can see right away, uh, we have a timing element to this challenge. So since it is an obstacle course, we built the timing element in. You can do it without actually using the timer, so that's up to you or not. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the case tab, and here we can see the, what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can see a little bit better what's going on, but we start here with our obstacle course. So you can see our first question is gonna be how many transactions are in the data? Well, let's scroll down a little bit to see what the data is. Now the data here is a transaction, category, item codes, prices, units. Uh, we don't have the total value of the sale. We're gonna end up having to calculate that. And then also a customer phone number and an order date and time. So a big data set we're working with, it has about 1400 transactions or so. Uh, so quite a bit of data we wanna work with and we wanna be able to work with it efficiently. Right? The idea of this obstacle course is you wanna be able to go fast. Now, typically we wanna take our time to solve problems and critical thinking is more important than actually going fast. Uh, but the idea here is for you to be efficient at common things in Excel, that way you have more time to stop and think about the harder problems about structuring your model uh, and kind of the deeper thinking tasks that are always involved in modeling. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually one trick that's gonna make things much faster for you to go through this entire case. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create named ranges out of each of the columns here. Now what you could do is you could highlight a column and you can come here to this top left corner and you can see it's already named transaction. This is because I've done this for you ahead of time to encourage you to use these named ranges. But the way that you can get this, um, so there are a couple of ways. One, you can just hit you can just come up to this corner and type what you want. You can also do Alt F3, which puts you into that area. Uh, the last trick though is a really slick trick. And if you wanna name all of these columns at the same time, what you can do is highlight this entire data range and you can hit Control Shift F3. Now you can see here it says create names from values in the top row, left column, right column, bottom row or right column. We want the top row. So we say okay, and it automatically creates named ranges with each of these names. Now you'll see how we use this in just a second as we start going through the obstacle course. All right, so let's get up here. We're gonna go ahead and start our timer. It says get to it. We can scroll down so we can see everything. And it says, all right, first thing, how many transactions are in the data? Well, here we can use a function. We can just count the transactions. So count is a pretty normal function. Um, an important thing to know is it just counts numeric values. So since our transactions are all numbers, it should work just fine. So what we're gonna do now is start to type transaction. And you can see it auto-completes for me in transaction, it has this logo here that indicates that it's a named range. So if I hit tab, I actually finish that out, close my parentheses, and I have the number of transactions. Now we see that my answer is correct, it turned green there. So now we go to the next question. We have question two, what's the biggest transaction number in the data? Well, max will give us the biggest of something in the data. So let's use max also on transaction. And that gives us our answer as well. So now we're, we're moving along in the file. How many units are sold? Well, we have units. We can actually see that down in our data. So let's just do a sum, right? We wanna to add together all the units. So we can actually just arrow down to units, hit tab to finish it, and then enter. So you can see what I'm not having to do, and I'll show you on this next one, uh, is I don't have to arrow around the keyboard a lot here. And that's saving me a lot of time and creating a lot of efficiency in how I'm working. So what I could do is I could do average and then control arrow down, 
and I'm trying to get the average price. So I go to the price per unit, control shift down arrow, and I can calculate my average that way. Notice that actually when I selected the range of cells, it automatically converted it instead of a cell reference, it's now the price per unit. Now, if I come back here and I take that away and come back to my range and I go almost to the bottom, we have a traditional looking cell reference. But as soon as I get that whole thing, it uses that named range. Now that's gonna make me again, a lot more efficient where I can just type the named range rather than having to go reference cells. It also allows the data to be worked with more intuitively, right? You know what the data is called and so you just have to think about that and think about kind of the underlying motivation for your calculation rather than thinking about where it happens to live in the spreadsheet. All right, so moving on, what's the smallest price in the data? Well, you probably know the min function, but min gives you a minimum value. And here we want the price per unit. Notice it uses underscores to separate the words. That way it's all kind of one continuous string. And uh, we got our answer there. All right, so here's one of the, the trickier ones, right? We now have a parameter here. We wanna know how many of the transactions are a purchase. So if we see the transactions, there's a category down here. And so the category can either be purchase or sale. So depending on what kind of version you're in on your, your own file at home, uh, this might say purchase or it might say sale. And each time you do it, it can change. So there are kind of randomization in the background that's gonna give you a fresh set of obstacles each time. However, the formulas are always gonna be the same. In this case, we're gonna use a countif, and we wanna count if the category, right, again, using our named range, is equal to purchase. And here we can just arrow down to that H22. That way we're using that dynamic reference. That way, if something happens and that parameter changes, our formula is still going to be correct. All right, now what is the value of all transactions? Here we're actually, we could use a sum product function, and you could use that, but I know what's coming. And I know that we're gonna need the value of each transaction in the data to work with. So we're actually gonna scroll down and add that to our data set down here. So I can actually type value to label it. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate the value. And what you could do is you could just come in here and write and multiply price per unit, time units, and then copy that formula down and that will work. What I wanna do instead though is make this dynamic. And I'm also gonna use my name ranges. So I'm gonna type price per unit, times units, and it's gonna create an automatic spilled array down that now I can work with much more easily. Um, and in fact, I have already named this value for you. So again, this will be something that you already have named, but you can use uh, Alt F3 to name it. Again, you could click up in the top left corner, create a name range as well. So now we have that, we can do sum of value. All right, now we have the total value of all purchase transactions, right? Here is where I need that value separately because I'm gonna use a sum ifs. What do I wanna sum? I wanna sum the value if the category is equal to purchase, right? So you can see how much quicker that is than having to go select the value range, comma, go select the category range, comma, and then select my input. It becomes a much easier formula to write, again, and also clearer in your head, easier to work with when you use named ranges. All right, how many unique prices in the data? Now, I think most of these functions I've used are fairly familiar. I think some ifs and count ifs are a little bit trickier, but those are relatively, um, you, can, you can study those to master them. Uh, but here is one that you might not know. Unique is a relatively new function in Excel. So we can use unique to get all the unique elements of an array, in this case, the price per unit. Now we can see when I do that, I get a spill error. So what it's trying to do is spill a dynamic array, a list of all the prices down the column. Uh, and it's not able to do that, so it gives me that error message. Well, that's okay, because really what I wanna do is I wanna count how many of those things there are. And so if I wrap this unique function with the count function, I get my answer of 55. So this is the first time we're seeing a nested function or one function inside of another. Uh, in this case, we're wrapping the count around that unique function. All right, now we ask, what's the total value of the 13th biggest transaction? Now, these, this used to be a lot harder in Excel. You'd have to take a set of data, uh, order it by, you know, from largest to smallest, and maybe go from the or largest or smallest to largest either way, and then count basically the order of them and figure out what thing was 13th in the list. Luckily today, we have a function called large, all right? So this is like max, 
Uh, in fact, if you do large of value comma one, that gives you the first largest thing, which is the same as the maximum. In this case though, we want the 13th. So let's select our parameter and hit enter. Now an important thing to note is as you're going through this, if you type 13 instead of comma the parameter, um, when it saves, it actually will refresh the parameters in the background and your answers might not be right anymore. So that's something to watch out for and always use parameters uh, because that's the best modeling practice. You're not hard coding in the, the formula, so to speak. All right, let's scroll over here. We got a little more room to work. Uh, and now we're looking for the smallest value. So like large, we also have small. So we use small of value, comma 19, and that gives us our answer. All right, so now we're asking, uh, what is the sum of all the area codes? So let's look at our data a little bit more. So we see our phone numbers here, and those first three digits inside parentheses are an area code. This is in US phone numbers. And so what we wanna do is extract those three numbers from that text. That way we can work with it and add them all up. So we're gonna use a couple different formulas here to extract that data. The first thing we're gonna use is the left function. So this pulls a certain number of characters from the left end of a string of information. So in this case, we wanna use left of the customer phone number, and we're gonna get five characters. So you can see one parenthesis, three numbers, and then the close parenthesis. So that's what we wanna get. Uh, notice also I use the name range of phone number, that way it all spills down dynamic. It's gonna save me time in working with these dynamic arrays. Now, I wanna make this a value so I can add it up. Now, you could take away the parentheses. There are a number of ways to do that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this to a value. And this is gonna be kind of a fun Excel trick here. You can use value to convert what is text into a value. And here it's gonna read those parentheses as indicating negative, right? Because negative numbers are often shown in parentheses in financial statements. So that's kind of the typical way to do it. And so we, converted them to numbers, and so if we put a negative sign out front, now we can convert them all to positive values. All right, so at this point, you could name this range if you want to, but I wanna show you just a little bit more of working with these dynamic arrays, and we're just gonna note that we're in cell J34. You can see that up here in the top left corner. All right, so if we go back to our answer now, we wanna sum all those area codes. So let's do sum, and I'm gonna use J34, and then to reference that dynamic array, I put a hashtag behind. That hashtag is gonna give me that entire array. I can add it all up and I can see that I got my correct answer. Now, if you go through here and you get a wrong answer, right? Say you just have 100 in here. It's not gonna light up as correct and it's not gonna let you go to that next question yet. All right, but we got this one right, so let's move on. Now it's gonna ask us how many phone numbers end in the number one. So just like there is a left function to get characters from the left end of a string uh, or a word or just a set of characters, there's also a right function. So let's come down here and we're gonna say equals right and we're gonna use our customer phone number again and we just want one digit. So it all spills down. Now we're in K34. So we can say, let's do a count if and we're gonna look at K34 hashtag again and if it's equal to one. So let's select our parameter and we get our answer of 145. All right, two more to go. Uh, now we're asking how many days have elapsed from the first date, uh, the, from the first order and the last order. So if we come over here, we can see in our data, our first order is January 1st uh, at 1.04 in the morning. And our last order is June 30th at you know about 11.30 at night. So how much time has passed between those? Now you might think about like, how do we break that into days and then minutes and hours? You don't need to do any of that. What's nice is in Excel, the days and minutes and hours are all converted to a number. And so if you want the total number of days elapsed, you just have to subtract the biggest one from the smallest one or vice versa. So let's do it. So we can do the max of the order date, right? Again, using our named range. Uh, and we're gonna subtract the min of our order date range, order date time. Once we do that, we have our answer. All right, so the last thing, this is where Lana Banana comes in. Uh, Lana Banana is an, a great uh, Microsoft Excel World Championship case from 2023. I highly recommend you look at it if you want a little bit more Excel esports flavor. Uh, but in this case, Lana is just causing trouble and putting bananas in the item codes. So now we want to know how many item codes have a banana in them. 
So let's come down here and we can actually scroll down and see, you know, down here in transaction 16 and row 42, we have a banana in there. All right, so the question is, how do we find cells that have bananas in them? Well, find is the last function we're going to do today. So we can do a find, and what do we want to find? Well, we want to find the banana. So let's select our parameter of the banana. And where do we want to find it? Well, we want to find it in the item codes. So we can type out our item codes, hit enter, and we see a lot of error messages. But we also see values, right? A two. What that means is it's in the second position of that text, right? It's the second character in the text. So it's working for us. We just have a lot of errors. So if we want to clear those errors out, let's just do an if error that we're going to wrap around our function. So if that returns an error, let's instead give a zero. All right, actually, let's make it just blanks. All right, so we have blanks and numbers. And what that does, it makes our last formula a little bit easier. So we can just count. And we don't need J34 or K34. Now we need L34 hashtag. Let's just count how many things have numbers. And there we got it. So congratulations, you're now an Excel Ninja. Uh, or you are an Excel Ninja, maybe you were before. And it'll give you your time. Uh, in this case, I finished in 767 seconds. Uh, it'll post your time here. And if you want to get faster, try it again. All right? Once you learn the techniques of using the named ranges and referring to them, you can also you can basically treat this as a speed run. Right? See how fast you can do it. Turn it into a video game where you're just trying to see how quickly can I move through Excel. Um, you know, that's not going to necessarily make you faster on your homework and figuring out a tricky problem, but it will make you faster in the routine things you have to do in Excel. That way, you know, you have more time to think about those hard problems or you finish your homework faster and you move on to the next thing in your day. You'll have a little fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learn a lot. Um, I really encourage you, if you, once you learn this, share it with students around you, you know, spread the message, get more people better at Excel because that's what MECC is all about. Thanks a lot and have a great day.